as a student, I was not really interested in Taoism at all. Uh, I, I went into Chinese studies because, well, as a young person, uh, I, we had very difficult time during the war. My family in Holland, um, I had nothing much to do. I had no very vague ideas about what I wanted to be in life. Uh, and so uh, when I started these studies, I, I lived in Holland. I went to France. Uh, I, I, I didn't make any vow, but I, in my idea, I would never go back to Holland again. Uh, I never return. I, I didn't keep that. I, Forty years later, I did come go back to Holland, but never really f found my own place there. But anyway, I, I, in, in France, uh, I didn't know what to do, but during a congress of circumstances, I enrolled in the university and went to, to learn Chinese because I loved Chinese art. And you see, uh, I had an advantage as a Dutchman, like John, you know. We, 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 we learn our language. So uh, I was good in learning languages. And the French aren't. They're awful. So uh, I became a good student. Uh, I was the most lousy student you can imagine. You, you, you imagine now I'm a member of the Academy, of the Royal Academy. I mean, th that is a joke, you know. I was the worst student there. Whenever I went to say something to young students, don't believe that you should be a good student or honest student. I mean, you, you, it's, it, it, uh, things will come by themselves spontaneously, as the Chinese say. You know? So that was my case. So uh, I, I learned Chinese, and uh, then I wanted to understand more and more about the background of Chinese art. And because of I want to learn about the background of Chinese art, I, I went to, to, to see uh, a teacher, a professor, who, who taught Chinese thought. And he was a specialist of Taoism. So China is huge, so if you... Uh, every, every teacher, he has his own specialty. So he taught me his specialty, which he had from, from his teacher, who was called Henry Maspero. It's a very beautiful book, Taoism and, the, and, the, and Chinese Religion, translated by Frank Kierman, published at uh, the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, is that right? Yes. And, uh, so, and of course, Maspero, of course, was a student of, uh, of, uh, of Chavan, who was the first one in Europe to, to work on, on that was text and that was canon and so on. So I was already the fourth generation. But in the, in the long run, you know, I, 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 little by little, I started to, to, to understand. But we knew nothing about Taoism. My teacher, Carlton Mark, very nice man, wonderful man, he, he said, we don't know anything about it. We, we have the idea, of course, the vague notion that the real religious tradition of China is called Taoism, but what it stands for, we have no idea. They had never met Taoist master. They had lived in Beijing, they, but that was during the 1930s, 1940s. That had been all obliterated. So then I, I worked uh, in our library. I worked my way through college by working in the library. I, I was fascinated by the Taoist canon. Nobody understood. So I, I tried to read that. I asked my master about all these rituals, these liturgies. He said, no one understands that. But then Life magazine in the early 50s ran a series on the religions of the world. And one issue, I think it's of 52 or something like that, is about religion in the land of Confucius. And uh, it was filmed, uh, made in Taiwan. It was a beautiful thing. And they went, these excellent life journalists, they went not only to the Confucian temple or to the president of the, they went to the countryside. And they showed pictures of processions, and especially of Taoist rituals, that no one had ever seen. So my professor called me and said, look here, in Taiwan, it's there. So when I did my PhD and I applied for a grant to go to China, I didn't go to the Chinese mainland, to uh, the horror of my friends and also teachers, because at that time, France was already very 
pro-Maoist, you know, that was the thing. I was going to the wrong China, so I went to the wrong China. But I did. And of course, in the beginning in Taiwan, that was not obvious at all, because when I came to Taipei and I went to the Academia Sinica, and I said, I'm coming to study Taoism, they said, what? Is that worth studying? They, they didn't think so. And said, do you know any Taoists? They said, we'll ask. And then after a week, they came back and said, we're sorry, the last one just died. <laughs> Historical. Absolutely. They didn't encourage me. I, I can't say you that. But um, I was young, and I liked to, to walk around in, in the old city of Taipei. And then uh, one day I went on a trip by myself to the south. And I went to, to, to a sort of temple festivals that were so fantastic. These big Taiwan Pai Pai, you know. Taiwan was left untouched. It was a conservatory. The Japanese, uh, the Japanese colonization had left the Chinese society intact. It, it was fantastic. You, you can't imagine. If you've never been there, if you want to film something beautiful, go to a big Taiwan Pai Pai. It's one of the most fantastic experiences you can have. 100,000 people doing things together, processions, singing, dancing. For one week, not one policeman, no one order kind of organization saying, work this way. Everybody knows where it's, 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 it's a, if you want to look at this kind of harmonious society, that's it. Really, it, it works. It's, it's very nice. I, I was, so I applied to go to Tainan. And it happened that the, uh, the director of the institute I was part of <coughs> was an ancient, was a former student of the man I just mentioned, Marcel Granet, you remember in the beginning? So he signed me a letter. You know, at that time, Taiwan wasn't free at all. Uh, it was very, very, they were very afraid of all kinds of spies. And of course, I was a spy by definition. I mean, it, it should be the CIA or nothing else send someone to Taiwan to, to study Taoism. That must be some kind of a pretext for, for spying out for I don't know what. <coughs> but he signed a letter and said, uh, I could go to Tainan to do field work from that and that day on. He didn't say until when. So with that letter, I, I, I just remained there for eight years, for eight years. And then, of course, I had already understood that uh, I shouldn't talk too much about Taoism. Was too, wasn't too welcome, you know. The, the Kuomintang is Christian. They're Western Methodists. So they, they didn't go very much for that kind of thing. But uh, so I had a, a copy of the Taoist canon, and, but I, I hid it. But someday, an old gentleman I liked very much, Mr. Jiang, who came to visit me every day, an old scholar, he, he saw it, you know. I said, why do you have the canon? I told him. I said, you know, in fact, I came here to, to look for Taoism. He said, have you ever met a Taoist master? I said, no, does it, they told me the last one just died. He said, no, I know one. So we went to see a wonderful old gentleman. And uh, I paid him a visit and brought him a com compliment and so on. I didn't speak uh, Hokkien at that time. I learned afterward to speak Minan. So I was translated and I said, so you are doubting yes, already for the seventh generation, you know, and uh, said, and uh, do you also do rituals? He said, no, all superstition. <laughs> no, only philosophy, you know. He had learned his Confucian lesson, you know. Huh? But two weeks afterwards, I saw him conducting a service uh, in one of the suburbs of the old city of Tainan. Mm -hmm. And I befriended him, it's a long story, but finally, I, I was allowed, first time any Western ever saw that, I was allowed to, to, part to see and to observe those enormous jiao, as you call them, this, this uh, sacrificial rest, uh, uh, nothing is sacrificed really. The Taoist sacrifice is not killing animals, it's burning paper. Uh, it's also an oblation. You write, write, write all kinds of books, then you burn them. Huh? That's also a, a way of worshiping. Huh? So uh, transforming. Huh? So uh, I was there. And uh, I, I looked at it. 
It was beautiful. The ceremonies went on for days and days and not the same. It was dancing and music and in the evening they would give concerts. And it was all in a secluded temple space. Only some representatives of the community went in. On the outside of the temple of Vibhitya, there were tens of thousands of people doing procession, performing theater. But inner, there was the, 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 the big mystery of uh, was performed. I didn't recognize anything. I, I said, there, here I am with a PhD in Dawa studies. You know, I have no idea what it is about. But uh, from my place, I, I had to fast, of course. I had been fasting for, for I don't know how many days and white clothes and they, because I had, you had to ritual clean. But I, I went from the place that was assigned to me to look at the manuscript they brought around, their, their, their ritual manuscript. I recognized these were the same text as I had already seen in the Taoist canon. So I, I said, where did you get them from? Did you copy them? He said, no, because the Taoist canon does not exist in Taiwan. But these were handed down by our ancestors. So then I knew I had hit on a real tradition. The only way for me to study that was to become their disciple. And it took them three months to think about that. But they, they accepted me. And they trained me in a very conscientious way. I didn't become a good Taoist. It, it's, it's very hard. It's far more easy to be a pro university professor than to be a good Taoist priest. I can tell you that. They're despised. They're very, very good. The best one are here in Hong Kong, the so-called Lamo Lao. They're fantastic. Everybody looks down on them, but they are keepers of a fantastic ritual, uh, liturgical, musical, and, and artistic tradition. So I, I was trained, and that opened up a whole part of literature on Taoism that was we couldn't understand. You can't understand a ritual if you don't know how to do it. So I, I, I learned that. So it opened up. So instead of publishing that field work, which at the time certainly would have interested very few people, I, I then embarked on studying all these texts in the Taoist canon and explaining them to my students. So there John comes in. He was one of my first students, came from Harvard. He was fascinated by that. So I, I, I trained him in this ritual. I, I told him, and then we did, all together with many people present today, we did a huge project, which was to write the first analytical and critical study of the whole Taoist canon, 1,500 books, of which only two or 300 had ever been read before. We dated them, we explained them. It was published by the University of Chicago Press in 2002, finally. Got a prize, an award. Well, that's it.